property investors. During this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up Zero for a property investment company. So watch in for the demonstration. Okay, I'm going to show you today in a demonstration how you can set up um, your property investment company in Zero. Um, so the first screen you come to might look a little bit different for you, but what we're going to do is set up a new account. And this is for an actual company that I'm setting up. So the way I'm going to click into it is through um, this button here in the top left and click change organization and then I'm going to click add new organization from here I'm going to type in the organization's name and then click buy now okay it now gives you different options of which package to click um, you're probably best off starting with uh, the starter package uh, this is the most provides the most value for money uh, then as you business gets bigger you might need to then go to standard which is a bit more expensive but eventually you'll have too many transactions to um, enable you to use this to, which will mean you can't use the startup package anymore in which case you'll have to move to standard and so you see that you can send 20 invoices and enter five bills so as soon as you get to that level and above it'll basically freeze out and you'll have to then upgrade to the standard package um, so what will happen now is then you'll click into the package you want continue to add-ons and then you'll have to give details of your account um, and then you can then you then set up the company the um the business in zero so i'm not going to show you this now because um i don't want to show you my bank details on the uh, on the video but this gives you an idea and i'll show you next what the next steps after that are okay so once we've set up then accounting information we then come to we click onto the um the kind of the screen for the company we set up it's going to take us through the setup the setup on zero we're going to click through a series of screens so we're going to click next then got some um, options to then enter address information this is really more useful if the company is going to be sending out uh, invoices as a property investment company you're probably not going to so i would just skip this bit get a um, vat a window will come up it'll say is your organization registered with VAT so we're a property investment company so VAT is not applicable for us we're going to click no that's going to mean we have to, have to give um, details of VAT on zero that makes things easier and quicker okay the next thing we need to do then is change and um, we need to make sure our year end is correct so if you don't know what your year end is you can either ask your accountant or you can go on to the company's house website um, and click find your company on there and it will tell you what your year end is so a lot of, so it depends when you set your company up as to what that date will be um, but I know for this company in particular it's going to be the end of January so I'm going to change this yes yeah, so we're going to click um, last day of the financial year custom in this case it's January so again it just depends on what you what the financial year end for your company is and then I'm going to click save Confirm that this is correct. Okay, and once we're happy that the year end is correct, we're then going to click on Setup Guide. That's going to take us back to the setup. Okay, it's going to bring us back to this screen again. So we're going to click No for VAT. It's not applicable. And check that the uh, year end is now correct. And then once we're happy with all this information, we're going to click Next. Um, there's no need to include back information. You can update your time zone as well if it's different to um, UK time. Okay, next then it's, it asks us whether we send invoices. So we're a property investment company, so there's no invoices going to be sent. So we're going to click skip this step and um, it's not really applicable to us. But if it, if it was, we could use this to set up how our invoices would look. We're going to click no, skip this step. Okay, the next one then it talks about users. Um, and so it basically has a warning that comes up as to um, this following step requires accounting expertise and it recommends the user accounts to do this. So yeah, you probably should take their advice on this, but um, if we wanted to now, we could basically invite users. And so an example would be if you wanted to invite your accountant to, to uh, basically have access to your zero, if you didn't do that, click yes. And it's really straightforward. You just add um, details of, of that person. So let's just give it a try, so click yes. And basically what we do there is we put their details in there, first name, last name, an email address, and then we tell them what permissions they give. So 
Um, for your accountant, it's probably going to be business and accounting, but they'll be able to advise this. And you can give a personalized message and then click send invite. Um, yeah, so that's basically how you would do it. Um, I'm just going to click cancel in this case because we're not actually going to send an invite out. Okay, so once we're happy we've invited the relevant people, we're going to click next. Next, then we've got, um, we have to look at chart of accounts. So basically, chart of accounts is basically like a plan of all the different accounts that exist within Zero for your company. So for every single transaction, it has to be linked to an account. So for example, rents receivable has, has its own account. Anything linked to a specific property has its own account. Um, so it's things like um, income expenses all have their own account, different types of each, as do assets and liabilities. So things that the company owns and things that it owes. Um, so what my recommendation here is, because when we're talking about property investment companies, is that you import um, a standardized chart of accounts, which I've produced, and I've got a link in the um, description of this video where you can download that um, chart of accounts, which you can use as a good starting point. So I'm going to click import from the file. Click next. It then asks what... Um, yeah, what system are you importing from zero? Does the file you're importing contain account balances? So I'll just say no for that. Then we click browse and we're going to find the file that you've downloaded from um, from this video. And with a um, some information about how many accounts have been imported. Some might not be imported for, for various or different reasons, but that's fine. Just click confirm. And because I've imported a couple of accounts, which are bank accounts, it comes up this this um, message here. We're just going to click save, ignore that, because we're going to be able to input details of our own bank account. So we're going to click save. Yes, continue anyway. I think, okay, then we're just going to ask us then to confirm our chart of accounts. And so we've got basically all of the um, chart of accounts that I've, you need for property investment have been included in there. There might be something which I haven't come across before, which won't be in there, but there's an option in Zero to basically edit names of charts of accounts. So you can basically add new ones if you need to. Just things to be aware of. I put generic ones in for your property investments. Um, investments. So what I recommend you doing here is click in there and change the name of that. So rather than say insert first line property invest address. So you can put the name of your property address in there. Um, it's the same for mortgages as well. So I have for different um, mortgages, I have, I basically use the name of the, the property and uh, mortgage finance. So you can go and edit those. And the other third one is um, director's loan account as well. So if you find director's loan account, I you can customize that to put details of your director in there. So this is just the one I've set up to make it really easy to use. Um, so yeah, if you go and customize that, and then once you're happy, click next. Yes, continue anyway. The next one um, is conversion date. So this probably shouldn't be applicable for you if you've set up your company um, from scratch and you've added it to zero. This basically enables you to set what the balances are for your accounts for the end of the previous financial year before you moved into zero. So if you're struggling with this, it's probably worth speaking to your accountant to get you to get, get their help with you because you need to know what your figures were from last financial year to put them in. If it's a brand new company, then this isn't really applicable. So we're just going to make sure that it lines with with our um, reporting year, but it's not really relevant in this case. So it's just a bit of test and adjust to make sure that aligns uh, with the reporting year, which in our case was the end of January 2024. So we're going to change that to 2023. But again, this isn't applicable in our case. Um, but I'm going to click next. Okay, so at this stage here, we could then enter details of our um, balances as at the end of the, the previous financial period. In this case, it's not relevant because it's a new company. If you struggle with this, you might need to get your accountant to tell, confirm with you what your balances were at the end of the previous financial period. But in this case, it's not applicable. So I'm going to click next. Okay, so it now says the setup is complete. Happy days. So everything has been completed. And now we're going to click finish. So then the next thing we need to do, and, and you know, the most important thing with Zero is we're now in our dashboard screen. We've set up our bank, um, our Zero account. We now we need to align it to our bank account. So what we're going to do then is we're going to click add account under this connect to your bank accounts. 
and types of banks. Um, so for example, Barclays, we could pick could be one. What we do then then is we click agree and log into bank, and that's going to then enable us to log into our bank account with our passport information. And then essentially means that zero is then um, connected to your bank account. It's going to mean that live bank fees are then um, included in your bank account. Um, and once the bank account is um, is set up and aligned to zero, okay, the next step then is going to be to set up um, customized um, accounts. Um, so it's really important that you have your profit and loss and balance sheet. So profit and loss basically shows income expenditure for the company and the balance sheet shows what the company owns and what it owes. So because it's a property investment company, that has to be set up in a particular way. So it looks different then from a lot of um, traditional sort of trading businesses. And so what I'm going to do is in my next video, I'm going to record and show you how you can set up these um, the, your chart of accounts um, and your profit and loss and balance sheet to be specific for um, a property investment company. So look forward to that next video. In the meantime, you've got your uh, zero, zero subscription set up. You now um, have your bank account set up and you can now start seeing transactions uh, being imported into your zero account. Uh, and, and an additional video, I'm gonna show you how you can then um, process those transactions as they come in. But anyway, hope you found this video useful and look forward to the next one. Thanks, bye. Hope you found this content useful. If so, please remember to like and subscribe for more similar content.